non-stop solid fuel missile magazine in the Cormage Missile Metropolis. The missile shower system is an automated, rail-mounted multiple ballistic missile launcher that can launch a rapid barrage of intermediate-range ballistic missiles from Iran's underground missile cities. One of these strategically important sites is located in Kormaj, in southwestern Iran's Bushehr province, less than 40 kilometers from the Persian Gulf and in close proximity to the oil and gas fields of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Bahrain as well as other extremely important infrastructures and of course U.S. bases in those countries. The shower system offers several advantages compared to the conventional method of launching a single missile from a single silo at a time, in a total war scenario, especially fighting an enemy with air superiority. When underground silos can only launch missiles one at a time, they can only launch a few missiles before being detected and hit by a counter-strike. The missile magazine system allows Iran to launch significantly more missiles. Firing a large number of ballistic missiles in a short period of time deprives the enemy of the initiative and delivers a lethal blow to the enemy's military and human resources. Depending on how many missiles with what range are fired from such sites as quickly as possible, it is highly likely to destroy a large part of the enemy's logistics and military power in the form of a strategic missile strike even far beyond the conflict line. It allows Iran to overwhelm enemy anti-ballistic missile defense systems with a rapid barrage of a large number of medium-range ballistic missiles. Since the missiles on their individual platforms are ready to fire, there is no need to reload individual launchers using a crane or transloader therefore storing the missiles more efficiently and taking up less space at the site and consequently many more missiles can be stored in an underground missile city. This new missile launch system reveals that the country is clearly interested in expanding and improving its already extensive underground missile facilities that, in the case of a full-scale conflict, would likely be one of Tehran's primary means of striking an early blow against its enemies. The Kormaj Mega City is located in a very pristine area, enclosed by two opposing mountain ranges, in the heart of a mountain at an elevation of at least 800 meters with a different type of rock than other undermountain IRGC sites, and is still being excavated. Unlike other missile magazines in Iran, the Kormaj site uses solid fuel instead of liquid propellant missiles. The interesting thing about this site is the location of the launch pads in the relatively upper part of the mountainside and therefore the steep inclination of the missile launch tubes, indicating the use of solid propellant missiles. A total of nine launch pads are under construction at this site, so one can imagine a very high launch rate. Six launch pads are located on the east and three on the west side. The launching pads are rectangular in shape. 7 meters wide and up to 15 meters long, and are protected by thick reinforced concrete walls. A large number of launch pads makes it possible to play with different frequencies and any number of shots. The ongoing development of the Fateh family of short-range solid propellant missiles continues to be central to these efforts. In the 20 years since the first flight test of the original Fateh 110, numerous variants have emerged with different guidance and range modifications. It is possible that the Kormaj site may house a variant of the Fateh missile family. A common characteristic of the Fateh series is that they are slant rather than vertically launched. Since the solid fuel missile of the Fateh family are simple in structure, and hence do not have a thrust vector control technology, TVC, this slope actually provides the conditions for launching this type of missiles. Therefore, it should be said that the launch mechanism of the solid propellant missiles in this metropolis should be somewhat different from that of the liquid propellant missiles such as Emad. It is not unlikely that the missiles automatically enter the canisters placed in the launching portal from inside the facility. Then the canister is closed and the missile is ready for launching. The use of canisters provides better overall protection for the missile and could open up additional options. Indeed. A handful of examples of Fateh series missiles being hot-launched, where solid motor ignition occurs within the canister, from canisters have recently emerged, showing the apparent practice of burying them in so-called missile farms. Most Fateh missiles, all those built around the original 610mm diameter body, at least, 
have ranges estimated at 250 to 300 kilometers. The Rod 500 and FATE 313 variants use lighter composite casings, resulting in a 500 kilometer range. It remains unclear if they can be rotated to cover more areas or if they are trained to a specific selection of targets. Another candidate is the Zalfagar missile, introduced in 2016, which has a larger diameter 680 mm body with its length increased to 10.3 meters. This gives the weapon a 700 km range with a 600 kg warhead. The Desful is a follow-on design introduced in 2019 that appears to be the same diameter and length and have a range of at least 1,000 km. The site has five entrances to the mountain, and it appears that two additional entrances to the opposite mountain range are also being excavated, which could house, depending on the complexity of the internal structures, several hundred transporter erector launchers tells for rapid missile firing as well as a large missile depot. The tunnel length of these two entrances could easily exceed one kilometer. It is not unlikely that these two tunnels would lead to other inner tunnels. Also, tells could have been placed in one of the five other entrances adjacent to the launch portals. These five entrances terminate in a series of very wide and high mountain ranges that could easily provide space for complex internal structures and consequently a mega-missile city. Outside the site, TEL missile launch pads are apparently also under construction. It is not unlikely that launch silos are also being considered. One of the advantages of using solid propellant is that reloading the missiles is much faster than with liquid propellant, which requires refueling. In other words, this site can fire almost continuously as long as the missile supply allows. In sites equipped with liquid propellant missile magazines, 30 to 60 minutes may elapse for reloading and refueling of the missile magazine, requiring significant space within the site for propellant and oxidizer. Therefore, in underground sites working with the solid fuel missiles, maintenance and safety measures are increased. Since for solid fuel missiles, there is no need for refueling, the reloading time is significantly reduced and more missiles can be stored in the site. It should also be said that due to the lower weight of solid fuel compared to liquid propellant missiles such as Ahmad, loading will be easier and faster. A little further outside the site, buildings can be seen showing that hundreds of Revolutionary Guards personnel will be working here. One of the features of most missile megacities in Iran is the presence of a football field for the working personnel. So if you see a football field next to a mountain, you should leave the place immediately. Finally, these and other sites equipped with missile magazines are extremely lethal and absolutely capable of delivering a strategic missile attack the likes of which have never been seen before. Thanks for watching and see you next time.